Hi, my name is Mark Dupuy from Simple Acquisitions and these next three videos will continue on with the detailed analysis that we go through prior to purchasing a property. If this is the first video of ours that you're seeing and want to see the previous steps, then sign up for our intro video series on our website at www.simpleacquisitions.com. In this series, I'll break down the first year of operations, taking into, into account all the renovations and changes that we'll be performing and we'll see exactly how that affects our cash flow. This level of detail is found on the month by month property eval tab that is on the underwriting template. Let's get started with breaking down the income. Obviously at this stage we need to get some numbers from contractors or the people that will be performing the work on the complex. To date we've entered the raw data from both the seller representing the current state and from our projections representing the eventual state of this complex. What's missing is the time frame in between these two, which is what is represented on this tab. Changes will be brought over time, therefore our returns will diminish as the changes are being done, then increase as those changes are completed and units, units are made rent ready. We can plan and track the, prog the progression and cost of those changes to see the performance as we progress through the implementation of the improvements. Since this is a hypothetical project, and we don't have any actual estimates from contractors, I'll simply progress through the various elements involved to show you how this will affect the performance of our complex. I'm going to assume it will take us three months before we get plans and permits and get contractors to start on our project. Then, once they start, we'll complete four units every month. The first line in our income section is a total gross potential rent. We've just transposed those numbers from the Property Details tab. The first column represents the total projected amount for the entire year once all our changes have been completed. And the second one represents the amount per unit, which is $7,800. The next series of columns represents a breakdown of the next 12 months from the time we take ownership. Since we are taking three months to get prepared, the income will be what it is currently reported, which is an average of $449 per unit for a total of $16,164. Month four is where things start to change. First of all, if we're planning on renovating four units, we'll need those to be empty. So there won't be any income for the four units in that month. While we're on the subject of income, recall back in the fourth video of the underwriting template series called Closing Cost. There is a section there called Deferred Maintenance. And in that section, we put in $324,000. Those are the funds to perform all this work. So when we put together a project, we raise enough capital to purchase the property and pay for all the work. Up until now, those funds were just sitting in a corporate account somewhere. Now it's time to see those funds put to use. We put those funds here to show them coming in. We're going to make a few assumptions here. First of all, we'll be able to renovate four units every month at a cost of $9,000 per unit. Second, we're going to hold back 10% every time for 30 days. That means we'll have an extra $32,400 of income coming in the first month for a total of $46,768. In month five, we'll have four units completed and rented at the new price and still have four units that will be vacant due to renovations. That will generate $15,172, plus our renovation income of $36,000, which will total $51,172 that month. Month 6 will have a total of 8 units at the new price, and 24 at the existing rate for a total of $15,976. With the renovation funds coming in, it will total $51,976. In month 7, 20 units at the old price and 12 units at the new price will generate $16,780, plus renovations funds totals $52,780. By month 8, we'll have half the units available, generating the new rental amounts for a total of $17,584. When we include the construction money of $36,000, that total comes up to $53,584. By month 9, we're projecting to have increased the income to $18,388, with 12 units at the existing rate and 20 at the new rate. Plus the renovation budget, we're at a total of $54,388. 
By month 10, our changes are almost complete. The income portion has grown to $19,192 for a total of $55,192, including the transfer for the construction funding. At month 11, we're down to the last four units that we need to be renovated, and the revenues are up to $55,996, which comprises $19,996 from the rentals and the usual $36,000 from our construction draw. In month 12, we'll have our last four units being renovated and we'll generate $20,800 and the last $36,000 that we set aside for construction for a total of $56,800. So by the end of the first year, we'll have all units rent ready and we'll be generating income at our new projected rate. The next cell simply has a total for our first year, which is $527,148, which includes all but the final $3,600 from the construction funds. So that is artificially high. The year two cell shows the final 10% coming from our construction reserves and a 2% increase from our initial projected rents for a total of $290,016. For each of the next three years, we're showing a rent appreciation of 2%, which is set on the property summary tab. This is assuming best case scenario, and obviously assumes we can rent out those units as soon as they become available, which is not always the case. Next, we have the loss to lease. This number is transposed from the property details tab, but is not actual income that will come directly into your pocket. It may come into play at some point when the tax returns are filed, but at this point, we'll leave it at zero. On the property details tab, we allocated $5,000 for rent concessions, which works out to be $138.89 per unit. And although that may not look like much, keep in mind, we're buying in favorable markets where the economy has been and is still growing and where there is a demand for housing, which helps us in getting these rented more times than not without any incentive. But to ensure we don't have our units vacant, we forecast that we might have to spend some dollars for that purpose. For our make-believe scenario, as we said earlier, the first three months were in planning mode, so there won't be any for those months. Month four, we just took the first four units offline, so we won't be in the process of renting anything out then either, so that month will also be zero. Month five will be the first month where new units will be available and the exterior facades and landscaping might not be finalized, but people are noticing that they're being completely renovated, so it creates a bit of a buzz. It might still take a little enticing to convince people to rent with us while the remaining units get finished, so let's assume we give them all a $200 rent bonus. For the next four months, the building facades should be completely finished, the landscaping and outdoor amenity spaces should also be complete, so it's not hard to convince people to stay in newly refurbished units, so maybe only one person a month needs a little push in the amount of a $200 bonus. For month 10 and month 11, the majority of units are complete. A new tenant base has been installed and a new mentality has been instilled in the complex, which new potential tenants can see when they visit, therefore diminishing our incentives to zero. For month 12, we put a big push on to get the remaining units rented and may have to give them an incentive for a total of $800. The next series of cells shows the total spent for the year, which we're predicting comes in under our budgeted amount. Since renovations are complete and we have a new tenant base, we should have no problems continuing to attract good tenants. However, we'll use the same $2,400 for years two to be on the safe side. Years three through five are left at zero. Now we'll look at the economic vacancy. The number that has been transposed from the property details tab is the one we used to do our initial calculations, which is two times the market average. We'll now use more realistic numbers to give a clearer picture of what we'll actually be facing. The economic vacancy amount row just below automatically calculates the dollar amount based on the percentage we input here. Again, during our first three months, we are planning and getting permits. And since the seller has given us actual numbers, that basically means that has factored in the vacancy rate, which means we can put our vacancy at zero. Once we pursue a property, we'd also get a rent roll document showing exactly which units are occupied to give us an accurate picture of what the complex is doing. Once we begin the renovations, we'll coordinate our efforts so that we have four vacanc vacancies every month for the remainder of the next nine months, which works out to be 11% per month. 
For the final month, we'll put in what the market vacancy rate is in that area, which is 5.4%. With the first year of doing renovations and getting the property ready for market, our vacancy is averaging 8%. We'll plug in the market vacancy for the remaining four years, which is 5.4%. The total rental income row shows the total of all the line items discussed above, starting with the total of $247,720, the amount per unit, $6,881, and then the total for each month in our first year. By default, our spreadsheet simply takes the utility reimbursement from the property details tab and allocates an amount equally throughout the year. Let's assume for our test case here that utility companies withhold our deposit for six months, at which point they will return it to us. So every month will be zero, except for month six, where we'll get the full amount of our deposit back, which in this case is $1,800. And since we've gotten all the deposit back in the first year, the follow-on years will also be zero as well. The last row of our income section is for any additional income. In this case, there is an on-site laundry room, which I believe the seller was rolling up the income from that into his rents. We'll keep them separate. There's also some application fees and deposit forfeitures. For the laundry, we'll assume some conservative numbers. Since these are all one-bedroom apartments, we'll assume a single person only does one wash and one dry every week, each at the cost of $1.50 for a total of $4,992. We'll add another $3,000 for the application fees and any forfeitures for a grand total of $7,992 or $222 per unit. If we look at that over the course of the year, we know we're planning on having four units out of service every month since they are being renovated. So for the first year, we'll only be generating $416 per month from the laundry. And when we include the other two incomes, that brings in an extra $666 per month, which is our $7,992 for the first year. Years two through five will also generate the projected amount of $7,992, which is pretty conservative. That's considering no increase, which I doubt will be the case in real life. The net effect of all these numbers is summarized at the bottom of this section, giving us an effective gross income of $255,712, followed by the income per unit, as well as what the income will be for each of the months of our first year in operation. And of course, a projection of what we anticipate the income will be for this complex in years two through five. To close out, so as you can see, during these first few months while we're bringing all the changes, the income is a little lower. But as we complete those changes, we'll have a completely revitalized project that will, that will generate some good cash flow from years to come. This is the level of analysis that we perform on every project before we begin making offers. So when we make an offer, we have a pretty detailed idea of how things will play out and what our cash flow needs and returns will be. It's not going to be too many surprises. Join me on our next video where I'll do the exact type of analysis I've done here for our expenses. If you would like more information, <coughs> excuse me, or would like to see how you can get involved in one of our opportunities, drop us a line. Our contact information, along with more details and some great educational material, can be found on our website at www.simpleacquisitions.com. Now is a great time to invest in real estate. Don't delay in making your money work harder for you. Remember, real estate doesn't have to be complicated. With Simple Acquisitions, it's smart, secured, and simple. I'd like to thank you all for joining me today, and I hope you join me on the next video in this series. Mm -hmm.